Hey guys, it's Sam from Buyer's Props, and today I'm going to show you how I made my Misfit or Reforge. Let's get started. So the 3D file that I decided to go with was from Radical Dream Restores. The model has all the details that I was looking for, so let's go open it up in Blender. So there's a couple considerations when you're making a blade with LEDs in it. Uh, I wouldn't worry about the blade part because I will be handling that in Cura. As for the rest of it, you need to figure out where the battery pack is going and where the chip is. Usually I like putting it in the handle because it's easier. So for this build, I thought taking this end piece off completely would be a good solution because you have this whole area right here where you can are able to fit the battery pack in the microchip. And then that just means you need to make sure that there's a path going all the way up here. There's two ways of doing it. Either you adjust it in Cura, or you hollow out the handle in Blender. It depends what kind of sword I'm working on and what, how I want it to open, that I will pick between those two options. Because this area is so tiny as well, I decided to hollow out, split this in half and hollow this out so I can have a channel running, my channel of LEDs running. So opening it up on Blender, so this is half the middle guard. So when we go to preview, we can see here's all the support, and this is the channel that I cut out for the LEDs. So the LEDs will come from the top here, go down here, go through this channel here, and go out here and come back and down to the handle right here, where the um, battery will be held. Now on to the blade portion. So there's a couple of settings that I use in Cura to make it hollow. First thing is walls, I usually do four to six layers. It depends on how big this is. And if it's a handle, I'll typically go up to six. So the next thing we want to change is the top bottom layers. Especially this one right here, top layer lines, we want that to be zero because we don't want this top layer line to be here. We will be able to see that if we have LEDs in it and we will be able to thread our uh, LEDs through it if that's there. Same with the initial bottom layers down here, we want that to be zero to get rid of these bottom lines right here. And you also do want to keep the bottom layer lines here because that will affect something like this right here where the supports go. It will not have those initial bottom layers there. So you want to keep make sure that is still at four. So the next thing that you want to change is info because we want it to be hollow, so zero. And then typically I will uh, make it brim because I find that it fails quite a bit because these are skinny prints. So I'll add a brim and then your support can just be normal. So once we slice this, Check it out so we can see that there's four light lines and it's completely empty. So the LEDs will fit right here all along the back of the, back of the blade. So I would suggest printing out a little bit of this to verify that your LEDs will fit. So I just bring it down to the same settings, slice, and then I'll just slice this little print out just to make sure. And I'll typically pick the smallest part of the blade to verify. Now we can start assembling the blade. Leave the small tip to last and glue together the main four parts. I use JP Bell clear plastic epoxy because it is stronger than super glue. Once the blade is assembled, attach the LEDs to the tip of the blade and thread them through the rest of the sword. Once the epoxy is set, I use three coats of XCC 3D on the blade. I cannot use a normal filler primer because that would block the LEDs. So XCC 3D is a perfect solution. If you're interested to know more about XCC 3D and how I use it, leave a comment below with your questions. Now for the sanding. The more effort you put into the stage, the better outcome you will have. I'll start with the 120 grit, then up to 220, then I'll start using wet sandpaper from 400 upwards. My ending grit is determined by what kind of finish I want and what paint I will be using. Silver gold colors tend to pick up more of the marks, so I'll use a higher grit on those areas.
For the handle, since it does not need to light up, I use Rust-Oleum Filler Primer. Sanding will be a similar process as a blade, but using the filler primer in the between layers instead of XCC 3D. Now with everything assembled, it is time to paint, and to cry while you mask off the blade several times. The handle is simple, I decided on the black handle because I wanted to color combo of black and gold. In the game it looks like a very deep purple, but it changes depending on the area you are in. The blade is where the paint job gets a little bit more complex. A lot of masking needs to be done to get those crispy thread lines. You also need to be very careful where you are using opaque and transparent paint. Don't be like me and actually test it before you start doing it or you're going to be sanding it down all again. For the electronics, I use a setup in all my projects. I use JST connectors and just upload whatever code I need for the specific project. The setup consists of three parts, first being the battery. They do have smaller batteries than this, but I can usually fit this into most of my props. The battery then connects to the Live Poly backpack add-on, which connects to the Adafruit Pro Trinket. The trinket is the brains and where you upload the code to. The bottom handle slides off to allow for the microchips to fit in. The battery has a slot in the end of the handle so it does not move around. The parts are friction fit together. For more information about the microchips, I would suggest checking out Adderfood's website. They have a lot of tutorials that are easy to understand. Now with that out of the way, here's the Miss Litter Report.